Hi everyone. In this video I want to talk about the domain of an algebraic combination of functions. And so to start off, let's look at this function f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. Now the domain of this function um, is going to be the real number inputs that give real number outputs. So I want to look at this thing under the radical. We call that the radicand. And I know that I can't take square roots of negative numbers. And so the, uh, the, this, this x minus 2 under the radical, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then I'll only be taking the square root of something that's, that's non-negative. So, so I know in this case that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And so for, for the function f, I know that these are the values that I can plug into it. Okay, Just the ones to the right of 2. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's also look at the function g of x. And uh, the same thing, if I want the domain, the thing under the radical, the radicand, the, in this case, 4 minus x, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. So when I solve this, I'll add x to both sides. 4 is greater than or equal to x. Or if we turn it around in English, x would be less than or equal to 4. You can see that if I plug in any value smaller than 4, like, say, 3, 4 minus 3, is uh, 1, I can take the square root of 1, or even a negative number, like, you know, negative 5, you know, 4 minus a negative 5, the 2 minuses make plus 5, and so that would, that would work out. So, so in this case, I want the x's to the left of 4. So that would look like these guys right here, if I were to graph them. Okay, and let me make that red. Okay, so when I go to look at an arithmetic combination of these two functions, like f plus g of x, um, then, then I know that, that f plus g of x is just f of x plus g of x, and that's going to be the square root of x minus 2 plus the square root of 4 minus x. And if I think about the x's that I can plug into this function, since this function is a combination of these two functions, well, it should make sense that, that it has to be greater than or equal to 2. It has to be something bigger than or equal to 2 in order to work in this part. And at the same time, it has to be less than or equal to 4 to work in this part. And that's going to give me a value right up here in that intersection of values between 2 and 4. Okay, so, so the, the domain of f plus g is going to be this interval from 2 to 4. If I plug in anything bigger than 4, then it's not going to work in this part. And if I plug in anything smaller than 2, it's not going to work in this part. So the, the domain is just the intersection where, where these two domains here overlap. And if I were to look at uh, the uh, f minus g of x, that would be um, the, so I'd have f of f minus g of x. That's just going to be the square root of x minus 2 minus the square root of 4 minus x. And you see it uh, doesn't matter that I'm subtracting here instead of adding. It still has to work in each piece. And so the domain is going to be the interval from 2 to 4. And if I multiply them, f times g of x, that would give me the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of 4 minus x. You see, I still have two parts there. And any x I plug in is going to have to work in this part and in this part. So the, the domain of f times g is just still going to be the interval from 2 to 4. Now, if I look at the, the quotient of f and g, I know that f of x 
over g of x, that would be the square root, and this is of course f over g of x. That's what this means. I have the square root of x minus 2 over the square root of 4 minus x, and you can see that again, uh, it's going to have to be greater than or equal to 2 to work here. It's going to have to be smaller than 4 to work here, but notice that, that in the denominator here, um, x cannot equal uh, 4 because that would make division by 0. Okay, so the domain of f over g is going to be almost the same as these other three. That would be the interval from 2 to 4, but in this case I have to exclude 4 because that would make division by 0. Okay, so in summary, the domain of an arithmetic combinant combination of functions is just the intersection of the domains of the functions being combined with the caveat that if you're dividing them then that then that denominator function cannot equal zero as well all right so let's do one more little example of this suppose I have a function f of x is 4 over 3x plus 4 and g of x is 2x minus 5 now the domain of f right here, the only thing that could go wrong is if I was dividing by 0. So in this case, I don't want 3x plus 4 to equal 0. That means 3x cannot equal a negative 4, and that means that 3x, um, or x cannot equal a negative 4 thirds. Okay. So the domain here is going to be the set of x such that x does not equal a negative four-thirds. It can be anything else we want except that. And g, the, the function g, notice that there's no division by zero, there's no square roots, and so that domain is just all real numbers. Or if in interval notation, the interval from minus infinity to infinity. So if I was to add these two functions together, I know that f plus g of x is just going to be the sum of those two functions. That would be 4 over 3x plus 4 plus 2x minus 5. And, and uh, we could combine those, get a common denominator, but I'm just going to leave it like that for right now because all I really want is the domain that's the main part here so the domain of f plus g that's just going to equal the intersection of these two domains well that means it has to work in this one so it has to be all real numbers except negative four-thirds and here it can be all real numbers they where they intersect is just all real numbers except negative four-thirds so so that domain would be the set of x such that x does not equal a negative four-thirds. It might be easier to uh, draw a number line here real quick. Okay, and notice that if, uh, if I look at negative four-thirds here, that would be all the numbers except that one. Let me get the color right here. Okay, so so this is uh, the domain of, of f, and then g is all real numbers. So if I were to graph that one above it, that would be this one. Let me change that color to red so you can see. All right, and you can see that they overlap everywhere except right at this one point right there. So the intersection really is all the x values in here except negative four-thirds. This negative four-thirds is the only point that is not in both of them. Now if I skip to the the uh, quotient of those two functions, so I know that f over g of x, that's going to be f of x over g of x. So f of x is this function, that's going to be 4 over 3x plus 4, and then I'm going to have to divide that by the function g of x. 
that's 2x minus 5. So let's think of that as 2x minus 5 over 1. So if I go ahead and, and uh, invert and multiply this, so I'll have this fraction on top, and then to divide, I, I invert the divisor, so I'll multiply by 1 over 2x minus 5. Okay, and this is going to give me 4 on the top, and I'll get 3x plus 4 over 2x minus 5 on the bottom. All right, now the domain, so there's my function, the, the, the domain of f over g. Well, I know it's the basically everything in the intersection of them, so I know it's going to be the same as this right here, but I also have to be concerned that the denominator doesn't equal 0. I don't want 2x minus 5 to equal 0. Okay, so we don't want 2x minus 5 equal 0. That means we don't want 2x to be 5 or x to be 5 halves, and you can see that right here as well, right? If uh, when you look at the final function here, I don't want x to be negative 4 thirds because that would make you know 3 times negative 4 thirds is negative 4 plus 4, that's 0, and, and likewise if x was 5 halves right here, that would make this factor 0, and you'd end up dividing by 0. So your domain of this is going to be the set of x such that x does not equal negative 4 thirds um, that's the intersection part, and then I also don't want the denominator function, the g of x, to be 0. So I don't want that to be 5 halves. Okay?